Hi, welcome to our collab with Nat and Sarah and Sarah Nat yes. and Rachel. Yes. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're um, we're we want to talk about we have the first time a guest, Rachel Bellamy. We're super excited to have her. Um, there's a lot of things that we want to talk with her about, especially the past uh, the brush uh, event. But um, before we get to that and introduce her, as always, we want to talk a little bit about what's new with us. So, um, Sarah, what's new with you right now? What's new with me? So I, um, I don't know if y'all remember from last, the last webinar, I opened up my first store <laughs> online and it's been going pretty good. So please check it out. Go to IamSarahMatthews.com slash shop and um, order some prints and some art for me. So it'd be lovely to send you something in the mail. We always love, you know, art supplies in the mail, right? And the second thing is I'm doing a studio tour with um, the National Museum of Women in the Arts. It'll be um, August. I forgot that fast. 18th. 18th. <laughs> <laughs> August 18th. It's, and um, it's going to be online. So if you go to the site, and go to calendar events, you'll be able to register to join. It's free as long as you, as long as you are a member of NEMWA. And I have a couple of classes too that are running at Pyramid Atlantic. Um, the first one is a one page book um, that is gonna be um, uh, on my website. So if you go to iamsarahmatthews.com slash classes, the one page book is there. There's also a Shibori Indigo Dying class and a Black Print Repeat class. So please join me. Yeah. And Kim also uh, put all the links to Sarah's website in the uh, chat. So you can check it out there. Um, what's new with uh, me? I have new art foamies out. Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, there are six new art foamies. There are city based the uh, Lady Liberty and the Hydrant are actually quite big. And I'm personally in love with the Hydrant. <laughs> oh, I saw your <laughs> yesterday. So awesome. Yes. Thank you. And then the next thing I want to tell you is um, I will have a new Spill Your Heart episode on August 27th. And this time we're gonna talk about design team. And as guests, I will have some of my uh, current design team members like Robin and Rika, but also some former design team members. And that might be interesting for those of you who have always been interested in joining a design team or just wanna know how it is to work uh, on assignment. But without further ado, we want to introduce our very, 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 very first guest, which is Rachel. And I'm <laughs> so happy to have you, Rachel. We're going to put your links uh, also in the chat um, where, where you can find her. So Rachel is the mixed media artist behind Soul Rain Art, uh, residing in Virginia. And it's Rachel's purpose and passion to help others in their journey of emotional, spiritual, and cultural healing through the transformative power of art. Rachel creates art, art courses, experiences, and experiences portions to facilitate healing every piece of art she creates she signs with her heart's prayer may your soul reign and rachel is also the organizer of the pasta brush event which we would like to talk about uh, at some point today of course and it's the topic of our uh little zoom cast hey rachel how are you i'm doing well nat thank you thank you sarah so good to be here <laughs> So good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I told Sarah she should ask the first yes. question. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> what you got? What you got, Sarah? What you got? <laughs> well, um, I don't know if people know, but um, I am. A, I've seen on your Instagram and on your Facebook page, but you were in the military. So what do you take with you every day from your military career? Yeah, so I 
um, am a fourth generation veteran. So that means my dad was a veteran, my granddad was a veteran, and my great grandfather. And um, in in America, uh, that's not the narrative we tell, right? We we tend to tell that uh, blacks do not fight in America's wars. And I'm, I'm living proof that for four generations, a family has served, right? And to the point where my son is at West Point. And so yeah. he'll be a fifth generation veteran. And service, it's all about service for me. It's about for me, it's it's fighting for an ideal, right? Fighting for the the hope uh, that this nation will be great <laughs> and live up to the promise it has, right? It's it's sometimes people always say, well, how do you fight knowing that it is the way it is? Yeah, I'm not fighting for reality. I'm <laughs> fighting for the hope. I'm fighting for the one day. I'm fighting for the future generations that they'll be able to live in a, a world where some of the realities today are gone. So. But I, what I take daily is this love of service. I just love to serve in any, in any capacity. When you see me creating, I'm, normally I'm in, a, I'm in a service capacity. I'm trying to help somebody on their journey. So that's probably what you would see, service. Awesome. Thank you for your service. And yeah, thank, thank you for you your, your service, service. Sarah. <laughs> so how did you find your way into art? Yeah. So... Um, I get asked that a lot and I try to make it interesting, but it's not that interesting. <laughs> so reality is I was always a, um, a kid who did both. I needed both sides of my brain functioning in order to, to be balanced. Right. And so I was, uh, in the gifted and talented program as a kid. And so I was real smart math science, but I needed that creative outlet just to balance off my geeky side. <laughs> Right. And I don't know yeah. if I knew that as a kid, but that's what as I've processed later in life when I was very much focused on the the technical side of my of my job and working and performing a lot, I realized, oh, I'm out of balance. And what was missing was art. Right. So um, I. I did a lot of writing. I've always done collage. I mean, my, my mom still has like just books and books of collage that I did as a kid. And um, because that was my way of dreaming too, right? So uh, collage for me was a form of dreaming and calling forth things. Like I was the kid who every time we went to the grocery store, I would collect the, um, the house books at um, the grocery store, the, the big houses that are for sale. And I would collect them and I would cut them out. And I would, then I would go into this whole space of decorating each of the houses. I mean, so <laughs> it, was, it was art, but it was a weird art. It was, it was this this union of dreaming and art at the same time, right? And you might have these elaborate vision boards from when I was a kid. Of course, I didn't know that was a term. <laughs> I, was <Right>. just doing, <laughs> I was just doing what felt good to me, you know, to lose myself in, in, in my imagination, right? Um, so fast forward years, fast forward, um, I picked up scrapbooking uh, when I was, when I had my first kids, my first set, I have, I have five. So the first set are old, <laughs> They're like 18 and 17. And then I have the, the, the young ones. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway. Well, <laughs> I'm in the same boat. So <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it any other way, but nevertheless. So I saw, I picked up scrapbooking and just fell in love. Uh, so again, there was that love of cutting. Although I can't cut straight. Let's just put that out. <laughs> right now. I love to cut, cannot cut straight. But uh, I, I love scrapbooking, but I always felt pressure. Like I was always behind, like always behind. And it was just so performance based. Like, you know, it had to be the perfect layout. And it had to, and then I did found Project Life and that had to be on time. And it was just, the joy was, I was, it was becoming a task. And I was like, yeah, this is not it. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I was, I, I think, you know, Sarah, I, I went to seminary and when I came out of seminary, I had, had some trauma happen and I needed to do something with the trauma and the emotions that all of that was stirring up in me. And I, I found Ray Michigan um, online on my treadmill because I was, <laughs> I was doing YouTube on the treadmill to stay busy. And I started watching her paint, do her mixed media. And I was like, you know what? There's such freedom there. And, um, and I would watch her 15 minute things just every day while I was on the treadmill. And then I said, well, you know, let me, let me try it out. So I bought some acrylic paint 
and the rest is history. I just fell in love primarily because the, the rules are gone. Like, you know, even if I messed up, yeah, I meant to do that. You know, <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> and, and you just keep going because I realize it's more about the process. Of course, I do like supplies, as you can tell, but I am also very much into the, the process of it. So a roundabout way, I found mixed media. And then over the years, I've gotten... Um, I started selling them. That was never the intention, but people kept asking. And so finally I said, okay, well, sure. They're just standing in piles over there. <laughs> there or my mom comes in, she does these clean sweep. She comes in and she's like, okay, I want this one and this one. And I see them on her walls. And so, but I've, now I sell them and uh, I've started to paint bigger. I'm painting big acrylic 30s, 30 by 40s, which is, which is, which is in itself, a challenge because you learn a lot about scale <laughs> and, the, and the things that you can do on a little piece of paper, yeah, you know, so. Awesome. So who are your like biggest inspirations as far as art? in, in art? Mm -hmm. um, so I, of course I have to say Ray, she, she always gets tickled when I say that uh, because, because that's how I discovered. And, she, and the reason I discovered Ray was because she was in both spaces. She was also in Project Life. So that's how I made the leap. She was making, she did a Project Life video. And so that's how I found her. And then I also saw she did mixed media. And and I just, I studied her for a while. And then I, as I saw people in that space, um, I, you know, I, I love Robin McClendon. Mm -hmm. She probably is, I must have watched her jelly print. Yeah for probably a year i had a jelly plate but I, <laughs> I was scared of it and i would just be like yo that's i like freedom <laughs> but that's that's a whole different thing there you know <laughs> and then and then i was i have i hold these um art retreats for my girlfriends every year and i said yeah tell one of the girls that was there i said you know i have this jelly plate i just never use it she looked at me like are you serious she said just put some paint on it and so i put some paint on it, and i did it and then I, I use that tool every day, every day. So um, I, Seth, of course, I love Seth. I love his layers. Um, Mary Beth Shaw, I love her use of color. I know that's not what everybody likes about her. They usually like her stencils, but I love her use of color. And um, as, I'm, as I am exploring, I like people who can do alcohol ink. I cannot. <laughs> I want to learn. I have the supplies, um, but I haven't tried it yet. It's because it's like, it's even, it's, to me, it's even more out of control than, than a jelly plate. It, it just does what it does. And what are you going to, yeah. So I'm going to try it one day, just not right now. So, <laughs> and then of course, Natalie and Sarah, why do Aww. I say that? Because, um, so, so I, Natalie, I have all her stencils. One of her stencils literally the boatique one, now, like, can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I probably shouldn't tell you. I'll tell you afterward. Anyway, I was just going to tell you, you can stretch your stencils by, you know, making them bigger or smaller. That's all I was going to say. Don't, I can't say no more than that. But, <laughs> and I have all her, and I have all her foam stamps and same thing with Sarah. I've got all her foam stamps. And so, <laughs> so. Very cool. You're an inspiration to us as well. I love your artwork. Um, I love the colors you're using. Your mark making is so super as expressive. And um, also, you are you were talking about service. Yeah. And I'm going to use this as a segue because I think this was maybe, we will find out, part of why you um did the pass the brush event yeah. last year right for those of us who our listeners or attendees right now who have no clue what we're talking about like did they literally like pass a brush like can you tell almost. us a little bit <laughs> almost right almost. can you tell us a little bit about the event and what your uh intention was with it um so we're like yeah. i'm Yes. Yeah. So I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to. Um, and you two, you two were pairing it past the brush. Um, <laughs> um, so I have to start though with unmuted first. So, cause that's actually what started it. Um, which means I have to start with George Floyd, 
which means I have to talk with Black Lives Matter. So let's just let's just put it out there. OK, so George Floyd um, incident happened. The murder of George Floyd happened and it made awareness to a lot of people who were not aware of things that are going on in, in the African-American community. And so for us, it wasn't a first time. It wasn't unfortunately not the last time, but it was a huge time because it forced everybody to, to look in the mirror. Right. And so for me, it, George Floyd hit personally just because I have a husband who's six two, dark skin, handsome, and and he's a big guy, and so I worry about when he's out driving, and because I know that when a cop stops him, they don't know that he's a veteran, they don't know that he owns a company and has a hundred employees, they just see a big black man, and then it goes down that whole story storyline, right? Same thing. I have two teenage sons, 18 and 17, who are driving. And I worry about them because they too are six something and 200 pounds, all muscle. And no one's going to know when at first glance that one is a, what I call hug life, right? <laughs> because he presents like, you know, he's a tough guy, but reality is he's, he likes calculus and physics. <laughs> he's, he's at West Point and the, and then my other son, big guy, right? And I mean, you, you don't know. He's a teddy bear. He's an introvert. He just wants to play his video games and eat popcorn all day, you know? So, and so, but that's not what the police officers see. And so I live in that fear, right? So I say all that to say, is that when George Floyd happened, I was, I think the whole nation grieved, but the black community, we grieved extremely hard because it was almost like the pain was exposed and it was so real, right? And I remember process i used art to process and i have a video on my youtube channel where i it's very raw so if you're uncomfortable with the conversation you might not want to watch it but <laughs> you will hear a real person processing what that pain was like and i processed it through an art journal page um and then i remember trying to go to work like that monday or tuesday the seventh or something like that. Anyway, and I, I literally was holding the wall up. I could not move. And I said, God, I can't be here. This is this is not a, a healthy place to be in this grief. And I in my spirit, I heard the word serve. And I was like, OK, <laughs> you want me to pick up picket sign? I mean, what what am I? What does that mean? And so but I heard it. So that meant I knew to be open. Right. And so I went to work. And I got into work and I think I got online on Instagram and I saw all these people posting these black, black squares, like what's going on? And I saw a couple people talk about muted. They were listening and I said, well, hold up. What are you listening to <laughs> in the art community? If you have never seen me, you don't know I exist. How can you hear my story? So that's why I did the unmuted. It was like, well, if you guys are going to be quiet <laughs> for two days, I'm going to take those two days and I'm going to, show you that there are a lot of black artists out there and we've always been here just we've been muted <laughs> so it's just, we were unmuted today was those were the day and I literally Natalie and Sarah I sat at my computer now for fortunate for me I had already started I already had been following most of the women right I think on day two or three people started sending me additional people but like the reason I was able to produce them so fast is I was already following them right because I I know I'm here. So to me, it was like, well, I'm here. There's got to be someone else. And so I'm, I was always looking and searching. Right. And so, you know, I, you know, I knew it's there already. And so it was easy for me to just to, to post a bunch of pictures of, of, of artists, black artists, just to give them some attention during this time that everybody was muted. And so that's actually what started down the path. Right. And then uh, I saw a couple um, popular artists, they were, they were liking my pictures or they were commenting. And um, Dina Wakely, she had commented on Ranger's page and she had brought up the attention of, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of her name. The young lady who has uh, the stamp, who made out the stamp deal with, I can't think of her name. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I can see her face. She makes the owls and the faces. She got a deal. It, I apologize, sweetie. <laughs> I could not think of her name. Um, but the, Dina had commented on her that, hey, she makes up and she would make a great stamp artist. And I said, hey, Dina, you're right. And thank you for, you know, standing up. And and I watched a number of, I watched um, uh, 
Faith, uh, uh, Faith Ann Bowles, she made a post about it. And so I saw people standing up and I was like so grateful that people were standing up. Anyway, so I reached out to Dina and I said, thank you for, you know, for being a voice. And it's not just me whining out here. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, that you're being an ally and you're standing up with, for, with us. And I, I appreciate that. And she said, hey, do you want to take over my page? And I was like, huh, like, like a Pastor Mike kind of thing. She said, yeah. And I was like, I do, but I don't want to do it just me. I said, <laughs> I said, let me gather about 25 of my friends. You gather about 25 of your friends and we'll do, a, a, we'll organize a swap. We'll organize a, a Pastor Brush event. And so that's, that's how that happened. So behind the scene, Dean and I were, um, working, working this. Now, what's interesting is Dino, Dino was scuba diving, so I was doing a lot of this kind of thing. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Dina, it's okay, I got it. Don't worry about it, I got it, you know. And so I, I, I remember I got her list of people, and I got my list of people, and I, you know, I'm, I am a woman of faith, and I was like, well, God, you're gonna have to help me orchestrate these because I know that two strangers, they need something that they can immediately, that you can pull down a wall. I need something that will connect them so that they don't feel like, you know, okay, we're in this awkward space and <laughs> you're forcing us to have this awkward conversation about race. And, you know, so I said, okay, well, so that's what I did. I tried to match up people who had either similar styles or, and pretty much is what it was, similar styles. Like I knew you and Natalie have a similar um, printmaking style. And so I was like, okay, th that's a perfect match. And then like Seth and Robin, I was like, okay, they like the grunge and lots of, that's a match, you know? So that's what I was doing behind the scenes was trying to, so that they at least had some common ground to start the conversation. And it just wouldn't be two people looking at each other like, <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> now, we ran it, um, Rachel, remind me again. We ran it for, or you ran it. We were part of it. Oh, you, it was, uh, was it three days? It was like three days. Um, right. Some people, some people went over and I, you know, we were fine with that, but it was like, or it was organized around three days. So that way people could go to live events if there were live events happening. And then, and then, I do have to tell another little, another little help that helped a whole lot with past the brush was, so when I was doing unmuted, I had a little angel <laughs> that showed up and, uh, and this little angel was behind the scenes editing my posts, right? Like he was, he was checking each of my posts to make sure that the links worked to make sure I didn't have misspellings, which was helpful because I literally was posting a mile a minute. Right. And this helpful angel was Tim Holtz. And he was, you know, he didn't ask, don't tell anybody, you know, just, I'm back here doing this. And so he was doing that. And so when Pastor Brush says, he's like, I can't be in the forefront, but I would love to help. And so he helped promote right now. And we, we just helped that was very helpful to get it out because, you know, he's kind of one of the biggest in the name in the industry. And so to have him on board for Pastor Brush was very helpful. It was an amazing event. And um, just from, I mean, there's one part is, uh, Sarah and I, I guess, are part of what came out of it was, you know, our friendship that we uh, had been serving on the same, not serving, but we have been on the same uh, company rooster for making stems. But till your event, we had never spoken to each other. And mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was like we you paired us and one of the things that we had in common was of course the love for printmaking and stamps and you totally got that and because we had that i felt for myself because we had that already mm -hmm. um it made it easier for us to have the conversation as you said about uh race and how what it means to be um black in america but also uh, being black in this industry in this yeah. media industry or in the art industry um be, right so yeah that was what i found like it was uh, such an amazing and thoughtful way of bringing people uh not only to the attention uh of a bigger audience but also to uh bring people together and form friendships yeah. Um, and we will, I mean, I'm always, uh, I will be forever grateful uh, to you for, for that. I mean, for, for so much more, <laughs> but like for uh, bringing Sarah to my life uh, as well <laughs> has been such a blessing. Um, so 
Sarah, how when you got approached by Rachel, right, to mm -hmm. join um, Pasta Brush, did you have like an idea or, and also actually I want to ask you to that, did you guys have an idea how that would like, what would come, like, I guess you had a vision for this, right? But like, what happened then? Was that um, what you at all envisioned? Um, did there something else come out of it? Or what were like some of your goals besides emphasizing and finally showing people that there is a big variety of black artists in this yeah. community. So, um, remember I mentioned I was a nerd? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so one of my skill sets is, is strategy, right? And so um, when I, I, I remember marking down, I said, well, if you're going to disrupt, how do you disrupt, right? You gotta attach the individuals, you gotta attack in influencers in the industry so though it may look like it was just kind of like it just happened it was it was kind of intentional so i i went after muted unmuted was highlight individuals influencers was past the brush and then the industry was okay we're going to call out some people <laughs> and get some buy-in and say hey why do you not have any black people on any of your design teams why do you not have any black teachers you or for this class, you've created all these barriers to entry, right? So if 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 one, if I'm not seen, that means I'm making this art and I can't sell it because no one, I don't have an audience, okay? Um, and then you you say your your criteria for teaching is I have to have ten thousand followers. Well, I, hmm. again, <laughs> and so it's just this loop, right? And so it, it was just challenge industry on some things and. And then not in a way that was confrontational. So I don't ever want that to come across. It wasn't, it was like, this is in service and this is out of love and, and we will do it in that, in that vein. But it was some, you know, some design behind it. I remember when Sarah and them, I sent them everybody a list. I said, listen, we got something coming in a month. I need you guys to get all your stuff straight. Because when the <laughs> attention comes, you need to be ready. I need you to have your, your, you know, your email marketing set up. You need to get, so I was telling them, hey, when the opportunity comes, and, I, and that comes from Oprah. Oprah always said, when it, you need to be ready. Because when the <laughs> opportunity comes, you know, Don't be now trying to figure it out, right? And so we all worked together for about, you know, for about a month. We're helping each other out. And people, yeah, people raise their hand. Hey, I know about email marketing. And so they would, you know, did a class or two on it just so that, um, and it's funny because we we don't we don't think about that part of it, right? Like I to me, I think one of the things that is missing is the mentors, right? So um, I know that probably Sarah, you know, you probably in a, in a way have become a mentor to Sarah, even though you got, you know, or you, she's learning from you because you've been in the industry longer. I know that's what kind of accepted for me. He allows me to ask, ask questions, stuff I just would not know, you know? Um, and so that's, for me, that was one of the benefits. I do want to give a shout out. So one of the things, um, one of my strategies on the barriers to entry was, you know, there are several people who offer training on how to do online courses but the barrier is so high. Like if I'm not selling art and you have a thousand dollar class to, to, learn, to learn how to teach online, I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> to get that. Right. And so I, I reached out to a couple people who had courses and I said, Hey, would you do a scholarship? Right. Of course I had to make sure that I had some people on the other side who were wanted to take it, but I did have, a, um, um, Jean Oliver was one of the people she offered some scholarships to her creative creative business course, creatively, creatively made course. And then Alexis um, uh, Bonavita Cola, she offered up a couple of her classes and scholarships. And so it was people, that kind of thing. And they were grateful that I asked, like, they were like, oh my gosh, I never even thought that, you know? <laughs> and and my, I, I had a, a general when I was in the military told me, he said, you know what? Never be afraid to ask. All they can say is no. <laughs> right? And if you can accept the no, psh, heck, ask. And so I asked and I gave him free liberty. I said, you can always say no, don't feel pressure. But I do want you to know that there are people who would love to take your class. It just may not be affordable right now. And so I, we are grateful for the people that came, you know, who let us take classes. And But Very so cool. the answer, you know, another way of uh, your question was, did the things happen that we wanted to happen? 
Um, yes, hands down. I mean, it has been an amazing year. We've had, I know myself, I've had a lot of opportunities come that probably would have come later. I'm not saying they wouldn't have come, but they would have come later. I would have had to do a whole lot more work. <laughs> so they came at a faster pace. Um, but just for me, just the, the relationships have been what has been great, you know, to be able to, you know, <laughs> call up people and ask questions that could, could be costly mistakes, you know, like, hey, can you read this contract before I sign it? <laughs> Those could be costly mistakes. And so to have a network where you can do that has been invaluable. That's amazing. How is it for you, Sarah? Do you feel like um, that the, that what you thought maybe <clears throat> if you had any vision at all, you know, when you were uh, joining past the brush uh, up on Rachel's invitation, did that come, did some of it come to fruition for you? Fruitition? Fruitition? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we I got know you. what I mean. Yeah, you got me right? <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Um, so yeah, that and more. Like things that mm -hmm. have happened that um, I would never have thought that I would be, you know, recording an entire like 30-day class from my house and then sending it off to Creative Bug and then they actually have it on their site. Never would have occurred <laughs> You <laughs> mean, you know, just like it's just it's bountiful blessings. And and I think from that moment when we received the emails about what was going to happen, um, I had was scrolling on Instagram and saw this thing about Shonda Rhimes. She wrote I think written a book about a book of yes or, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. something like that. And I was like, Well, okay, from this mo moment on, I'm gonna declare a year of yes and I mm. said yes to everything and I'm telling you it's just been I don't know bountiful blessings I, I can't <laughs> I can't you know articulate all the things that have happened and then with you and I like we are have continued to be friends this entire time and there are things that Yes, we do have in common when it comes to making art, but we have more <laughs> things in common through conversations um, that we have discovered uh, about <laughs> each other. So, um, but we are making a mission to see each other in person. Oh yeah. Oh baby, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> we are going Let to me ask a, a, a follow-up question and then I, I turn it over back to Sarah to ask more questions or the audience, of course, right? So <clears throat> what, I'm, what I'm asking myself now is, uh, so we are a year later, right? And part of it was also, so I've been working in the industry for so many years, right? In the scrapbooking mixed media industry and I've been going to uh, creativation and I'm not saying that to kind of like toot my horn I'm saying that to just say I've been seeing um, you know where the industry has been at the creative industry and um, there uh, were never there was never a lot of diversity right mm -hmm. so this year um, for creativation or former CHA which is the biggest craft and hobby um, you know, now even with NAMTA, which is like the national art material, you know, so it's just like the, the big thing where everyone, every manufacturer who has anything to do with um, the art and hobby, craft and hobby uh, industry uh, used to go there and had an exhibition at a trade show, mm -hmm. right, and introduced their newest um, stuff and it was never diverse. I mean, like I would be flying in from Europe and I would be like, oh, diversity, not a thing here, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and like in in many aspects, uh, whether it be black people, people of color, women in leadership roles, you know, um, disabled people, like I mean, you name it, <laughs> like you know, there was nothing. So this year they did this um, event. Um, online and I was invited as a speaker and I was very, you know, that was awesome. And there was actually um, a, a panel on diversity. And um, I 
I was like, okay, sign me up. I want to know what they're talking about. And I, I was very disappointed. And I tell you why I was disappointed because after this, you know, amazing event that Rachel had put together and, you know, we have been people and manufacturers that have been um, pledged to um, change things uh, were at this online event, right? And it's run by people, it's run by its members. And um, it was a very, very good panel discussion. Don't get me wrong. It was very straightforward. And it was basically saying, if you're not ready for diversity, then you can you can just like close your shop now. Uh, mm -hmm. You're not you're not on par. And it was actually that was actually really good. But what really boggled my mind was that there was not one single black person or actually even the one Asian person that they had on the panel, not one person was from our industry. Zero. They invited writers and, you know, influencers in different ways. And, and I was so disappointed. I was just so disappointed. And then they were like, yeah, well, where do you find these people? And I'm like <laughs> writing in the chat, like, have you not seen unmuted or, and I was like, you know, putting the, the, the links in the chat. And um, so this is, I mean, a long way to ask my question is from all these um, promises and ways of what people were saying are, are going to change uh, in the industry, how much do you think we came along? I mean, change takes some time sometimes too, but how much do you guys think um, we came along in this one year? Because it's now, it's basically a year. Mm -hmm. Long, long question, long winded question. <laughs> Up to you guys now. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> okay, so um, I feel that a lot of the organizations that I have worked with have done, they have put steps forward to making a change. Like some of them done diversity inclusion trainings, um, which I found to be uh, like, you know, when you're the only black person in the organization and they want to have a diversity inclusion talking about issues like Black Lives Matter, it feels like sometimes that you're the only black, per you're, mm -hmm. you're speaking on behalf of all black people. Mm -hmm. and I don't like being that situation. So I have found myself, yes, speaking up because I'm the only one, but then giving them the information saying, hey, I'm speaking from Sarah Matthews point of view. Not mm -hmm. all black people may believe this. You know what I mean? So yeah. I really did appreciate that they tried to come up with, you know, more diversity and inclusion statements. They tried to, you know, bring more of a conversation and are trying to hire more people that are diverse. I totally get it. But I just don't want it to be a check the box situation. Mm -hmm. We did this, check the box, we're good. No, this it's continuous process. And so I feel like any place that I'm affiliated with, I feel the need to say, no, we have to keep going. You have to keep pushing. Um, because we, we to, in order to make substantial change, we have to keep doing the work. So I'm just there to remind them that they said what they said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> definitely, definitely they need the reminders. How do you feel about that, Rachel? What what changes? Like, do you uh, feel that there needs to be like, uh, excuse me, guys, <laughs> how about um, accountability I, here? <laughs> I, I saw um, I saw a lot of effort. Right. And and. When you go from zero <laughs> to 50, then you just got to be happy. You know, it's like, yes. However, at one point we want to get to, you know, you know, <laughs> change. But so I'm, I'm very grateful for, you know, the efforts. Um, I think 
uh, Sarah uh, hit a point about when you're the only one and one thing I ran and have, have run into is this box we get put in. Um, and the box is one of those that, and, and the box is surrounded by bias and myths, right? So one of the boxes is, um, well, you're a black artist, you're gonna create black themed stuff. And, and, and that may be true, <laughs> but don't put me in the box and, and I have to stay in this box and I can't come out of the box. I like to draw butterflies too, right? Like I don't <laughs> like only wanna be in the box and to be the, well, we need you to do diversity stuff, only diversity stuff. No, no, let me be creative. Let me be an artist. You didn't tell um, my white counterpart, you know, only can make white art. <laughs> Or, or, or things that look what does that very, even you know, mean? I mean exactly right. but that's but but that's that is the box we put in it, it's it's natalie can do everything mm. rachel you gotta put i want you in this little box and then the box is constrained you can also get the feedback well you know black black stuff doesn't sell because <laughs> what <laughs> You know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's there. So again, I start off with, we've made a lot of progress. I know it's funny because you see design teams come out and you kind of know, okay, they, they, at least they were aware and they, they, you know, but then again, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird battle. Right. So I remember one of the young ladies talked to me, she was like, I don't know how to process this. Like I'm getting an opportunity, but I don't want I don't want to, to know that I got it only because I was black. And I said, first of all, I need you to let that go. Right. Like mm. <laughs> that's going to hold you hostage. You can't walk around thinking that, that are you a good artist? Yes. <laughs> and you deserve it then. Right. Like just don't feel like that's the only reason why you got on it. Right. Um, and so it's this, it's this battle we all have to dance in. Right. And so for me, I, I go back to being when I was at West Point, when I was at West Point, there were there were a thousand uh, uh, in my class. There were a thousand cadets, and there were eight black females. Right, so I I've learned some coping me mechanisms on being one. <laughs> right, and and one of the things that I learned very early on was so I, I remember this. I'll just tell a quick story. I told you I was I've been good with my stories, so I get to have this one. Okay, yes. so <laughs> of course. This is one story. All right. So, so I was, I think I was a sophomore or junior at college at West Point, And I was lamenting about how bad it was and how everybody, you know, and it was a question. This was reality for me. Every time I walked into a room, I did, I asked myself, okay, do they see me as female or do they see me as black? And, and, and Sarah understands that. And, <laughs> and, and, and that just lets you know, okay, what am I up again? What bias am I up again? And do I have to overcome as I enter this room? Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I spent a lot of my headspace in that head, you know, thinking about that. Well, you know, if, they, if I'm black, they think that I'm not smart enough to be here. So let me just show them that I am. So I spent a lot of energy trying to prove that I was worthy. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Or that I was of equal caliber as the, the other individuals who were at West Point. And then, um, and then it, I had this mentor. I went to him. I was lamenting. And he told me, he said, you know what, Rich, you got to look at it. You need, I need you to flip the script, right? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he says, you got to think about it this way. In a classroom of 10 people, right? Or, or 12 people, right? There's you and there's 11 other white males, in order for a white male to stand out in that class, he's got to be either amazing at the top or terrible at the bottom. But those nine in the middle, they just get lost. <laughs> he says, but you automatically command attention. So take it. Like, and so that was my way of, of learning. Okay. You know what? Quit whining about it and take it, take full ownership of the fact. Yes, I am the only one here and I'm going to break any myth that you have. That's not my objective, but just keep, keep watch <laughs> and you're going to see me do it. Right. And so I was trying to explain that to one of my friends who was calling me about, you know, I don't, I don't know if I should take this deal because I only give it to me. I'm black. I said, listen, you got attention. This is something you've wanted and you've earned it. So take it and make it do it in excellence. Cause if you do it in excellence then no one can argue with it. Right. Like I tell my son that all the time. I said, you know, I don't need you to, we protest by being excellent. That's how we protest because that will hands down say more than anything else we do. And so, I don't know, my performance-based mentality sometimes needs to break, but. <laughs> but 
Yeah, because it, it it ends up being really exhausting mm-hmm. because very exhausting. trying to overcome whatever stereotypes you think they might have, and yeah. so it's just it's just a lot, right? Yeah. And so yeah, just being excellent, just be excellent in the just skin that you're in. Yeah, you know, um, that was the one of one of the things that you know when we were put together. At first, I was like, oh, I don't need people to save me. That's what. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember that conversation. Like, yes. I'm just good with the 500. I think I have 500 followers. I'm good with the 500. Like, I don't need people to, like, yeah. save me. But the, by the same token, when when Rachel sent out the email saying, you need to do all this, I'm like, I'm going to have that stuff done. Like, <laughs> like it, it's going to be excellent because I don't want yeah. any questions or, you know, you know, people not knowing who I am or, or my vision or whatever, it's going to be right here. Yeah. And, and that, and that's important. Right. And so all those things that I learned through that process, I take with me. So when people say, Hey, I need your bio, so-and-so and so-and-so. Yep. Copy paste. <laughs> I already have it. <laughs> I don't have to search for it. It's all in one place. Copy paste. There you go. Photos, everything. And it's within seconds. Oh, and by the way, you take amazing photos. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I need a black and white, like the one on the your, your <laughs> avatar thing. <laughs> so um, I know we have a, this was, this was amazing. I mean, like, thank you for being so open and also vulnerable. Um, because I'm sure that is also not easy to, um, you know, be on the spot and answer these questions. Um, and yeah, just thank you for being here. Um, I want to also just say, if any of you guys have a question of our uh, people that joined us today, please don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A. Um, we have a couple more questions. Uh, Sarah, do you want to shoot the next one? Or yeah, should yeah. I? <laughs> Go, Sarah. <laughs> so what are your plans for a next event? Yeah. So, you know what? Honestly, I wanted to do one in July. It's August. <laughs> so what happened was life happened for me. Mm. And, um, and it just got away from me. So we still are planning to do one. Might be October. Okay. That'll work. October. We'll do one in October because I released a course, my first course. So you had asked about some of the progress that things that have happened. So one of my, um, one of my dreams was I wanted to teach online art courses because I'm a, a teacher trainer by heart. And, um, and one of the things that I called out in one of my videos was, you know, there are these teaching platforms and they have hundreds of artists and not one you know and and so i i just reached out right again that general told me hey if you can accept their no go ahead and ask and so i reached out and i said hey ivy i would love to teach on your platform what do i have what do i need to do she said oh my gosh i'm so grateful i would you know same thing with uh, gene oliver so so i will be on both platforms my class released on ivy newport's last the 22nd I'm recovering from, I had no idea how much, how much is involved in creating an online course, but I made a course and it's called the joy of motif. And that is out. Um, and so, yes, we will have another event, but that's why we didn't have the event in July. I was, I was just trying to birth that baby and it was a big one. So did it. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Is, um, is motif an acronym? Yes, it's an acronym. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so I, in the class, I, I discussed two of my things, right? So the first one is, um, for me, art is my way of getting out of my head and into my heart, right? So that's the part of the joy part. And I have this process where if you've ever seen me work, I never work on one piece of art. I work on 40 pieces at one time because my head can't get involved. It's just overwhelming. It looks around like, yo, this is too much. And my head leaves. And so, <laughs> and then, and then, so then I can just create now. So I'll have all these 40 pieces of art going at one time. And so I share that the joy part 
of that, that's the joy. And then motif is, um, so I went down this journey and most of us who are art students, cause I have a, a bachelor's of fine arts from Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I was, you know, I'm studying all these people and I was like, and then I'm like, oh wow, I could tell who you were studying because your art looks like them, right? And so I had gone through this period where I was like, okay, well, you know what? What do I like? What's my thing? And so I think all art students go through that. And so I take you on this journey on how I go about creating my own style. And so motif um, is M is for marks, O is for objects, T is for textures, I is for images, and F is for focal points. And so that's the process I use to make all of my art cohesive. So that's very cool. And also Kim just put um, your link into for the class into the chat. So check it out. Sign up for her class. Oh, can I just tell you so that I get credit for it? Oh, there's a different, I see. Yeah. <laughs> don't so, go so, to the link that Kim Yeah, don't did. go to that link. No, no, go to my <laughs> link and it's, and I'll, I will, um, it's bit.ly, it's bit.ly, if you know how to spell the bit.ly, B-I-T period L-Y, whatever slash that is, backward slash. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's joy of motif, all lowercase. Maybe Kim can put that in there. There she is. Perfect. Oh, thank no, you, Sarah, Sarah did it. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Sarah. No, <laughs> Sarah <laughs> didn't. That's not going to help. <laughs> so. Wait, wait, wait. We get to it. We get to it. We get to it. <laughs> Yay, <There> it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was still copying and pasting. <laughs> I'm so slow. You know, you know. <laughs> 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 that's so cool and i um i'm so happy that you are doing um these classes too she also did a fabulous uh class for creative jumpstart if you haven't seen it yet did, for, yeah yeah uh, this the was class. the year of classes i did one yeah. art for um the art summit i did one for uh tiara um oh yeah right yeah mm -hmm. very cool so um let me see what else we had. We don't have any questions from our attendees yet. They're like, no, 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 everything is covered. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Well, I, that's easy to have because I, I will talk your ear off so I can understand that. <laughs> a little, a little so, joke. Um, so I, I got on a phone call with Becky Higgins now. I have been a Becky Higgins fan for life. I told her we've been besties for a long time. She just didn't know. <laughs> and so, so we got on the phone and, and I'm having total fangirl moment, but an hour later, she's like, yeah, I said five minutes. I said, I know you said five minutes. I just started laughing when you said five minutes, I was like, no one talks to me for five minutes, but okay. <laughs> so she's like, next time I'll schedule an hour. I was like, that'd be better. So <laughs> those are the best. Uh, those are the best. Hey, Marsha, I know a name. <laughs> 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 so that was so delightful um thank you so much for being our very 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 first guest hopefully yeah. not the last guest but and thank you for everything that you have done um for us i mean this is a selfish thank you in this moment right but i also say <laughs> the, the bigger thank you right um Thank you for bringing Sarah and me together too. You're Although welcome. that was not the number one um, thing, I know. <laughs> no, but no, but honestly, though, it blesses me when I see, I see, um, oh my gosh, I'm just a terrible name today. I see Mistel and Sean, they have their, their weekly. I'm just like, yes, you know, like it wasn't just the thing. It was true relationships, you know? And so uh, it, that blesses me. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, Rachel, so guys, please check out the links that we put in there. Don't use Kim's link, use um, the <laughs> link <laughs> so that um, Rachel get her affiliate fees through that right. as well. And then um, also check out her Instagram and her website. Yeah, so let's talk oh, about Instagram. We've been trying to beat this algorithm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it out here. So we are at 9646, up oh, 9647. <laughs> we just need 300 beautiful souls. <laughs> okay, so 300 beautiful souls, sign up for her Instagram uh, account. Um, Kim just posted it. So if you don't, 
haven't yet, follow her now. And, and I know, can I just say something real quick now? I know I'm take, oh, taking over, but it's not, it's not the vanity of the number. It's what you get with the number. Yes, I know. It's, 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 it's going to change. Swipe. It's going to yeah. change. They're going to roll it out for all of us anyway. Oh, now. They... <laughs> <laughs> when? <laughs> I don't know. They, they haven't said when, but there will be a, uh, like, there will be for people that don't have the ten. Oh, no, no, they'll Which just Rachel make another one. They'll anyway. just make another. They'll just make another bar. He'll be like, oh, but if you don't have this, <laughs> but no, I but actually anyway. think it is good that they do it because it helps people to less concentrate on the follower thing. I'm kind yeah. of, you know, I'm like, yeah fed up with that so i think it's good that they roll it out that everyone should get that but it should be any moment i'm like every day i'm like where's my sticker (laughs) it's not there yet (laughs) but it's coming anyway but in any event follow uh rachel yes uh, so that she can get to ten thousand before the sticker comes out for everyone <laughs> and um i want to go and finish this up because we are uh at the end of our zoom cast thank you again rachel thank and i want to point thank out you, that our next episode is going to be back to school yeah. it's going to be on september 7th uh again at noon and in this episode um, um, Sarah and I will be going back to school, as the title already says. As teachers, um, we usually find ourselves in the front of the class, but sometimes stepping back and taking on the role of student can be incredible, beneficial, and inspiring. And um, we can always learn from each other. And that's what our episode is going to go uh, be about and we each told each other already what we would lear- like to learn like a short version uh, that's doable in a zoom podcast webcast whatever we are doing here um, for that episode so stay <laughs> tuned and sign up uh, Kim posted the link so that was it that was our art collab with Rachel today Woo-hoo! <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, for Thanks for coming. <laughs> Bye-bye. <Have a> <laughs> you too. <laughs>